Hello everyone welcome back to AB Space Channel. My name is Armin your today's host. Elon Musk has announced the exciting transformation of Massey's gun range at Starbase into a dedicated rocket test facility. The U.S. Department of the Air Force is taking a significant step towards advancing the country's space capabilities with the establishment of the Space Force. In this must-see video, we uncover the top-secret plans and cutting-edge technology behind the mission to dominate the cosmos. In this video, we delve into the details of this proposed action and explore how it aims to provide the necessary launch and landing infrastructure for Department of the Air Force payloads. Join us as we uncover the importance of this development and its potential impact on the future of space exploration. SpaceX is taking over America's largest spaceport, Rocket Labs. One of the biggest launch pads at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station is coming up for grabs this year, and SpaceX is looking to make the sprawling facility a new home for their Starship rocket. The U.S. Space Force is about to begin the lengthy process of certifying SpaceX for the use of Space Launch Complex 37 at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. In the words of the U.S. Department of the Air Force, the organization that runs the Space Force, this proposed action is to advance U.S. space capabilities and provide launch and landing infrastructure necessary to launch and insert Department of the Air Force payloads into space. Which means that the Department of the Air Force considers the expansion of Starship launch facilities on the Florida. Space Coast to be particularly important to U.S. policy. The process itself will mostly center around an environmental impact statement, which will do a thorough study of the area around the current launch facility built on SLC-37 to ensure that the Starship launch and landing operations won't cause any serious damage to the local ecosystem. And given that the site is currently occupied by the United Launch Alliance and their Delta IV heavy rocket launch hardware, it's pretty safe to say that SpaceX won't be in much danger of a bad finding here. But the rules say that a new assessment has to be made and so the Department of the Air Force will be leading a group of federal agencies including the FAA, NASA, the U.S. Coast Guard, and of course Space Force in determining if giving SpaceX a second launch site for their Starship vehicle would result in compromising the launch capabilities of the rest of the Space Center. The first step will be to make the environmental study a process that typically takes about a year as part of the normal environmental impact statement activities the public will have a chance to get involved. Through a comment submittal process as well as a series of open meetings held on March 5th, 6th, and 7th of this year. This is done so that anyone living and working nearby has a chance to raise any concerns about the project before the government gets too far into the study. As we said earlier, the Department of the Air Force is currently looking at SLC-37 which is currently playing host to the ULA and their heavy Delta IV rocket but the final launch of that vehicle is due to take place in just a few weeks after which time the ULA don't have any plans of continuing to make use of the site. However, as SLC-37 is a facility that is already seeing use, SpaceX would have to modify, reuse, or demolish the infrastructure that's already there in order to make it ready for Starship. This is also part of what the environmental study is looking at. In the case that the former ULA launch pad isn't fit for the purpose or has any other sort of issue, the Department of the Air Force-led team has two alternative proposals. The first is an entirely new facility which SpaceX will get permission to build between Complex 37 and Complex 40 where they currently launch the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. This is similar to an earlier idea for the company to build a new pad adjacent to LC-39A where an incomplete Starship launch tower is currently being built. Unfortunately, all work on this secondary pad, originally called LC-49, has stopped for some reason leading SpaceX to move their second Florida tower to the Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas, and leading the Department of the Air Force to apparently offer these alternatives instead. The final alternative for this study is no alternative, as in SpaceX will not be getting a new pad at Cape Kennedy, stop asking alternative. Obviously this last one would not be ideal and it would be likely that the Department of the Air Force would try to find another launch site somewhere else should it end up that the Florida coast has room for only one Starship launch facility. Because that's definitely where this is going. The U.S. military has made it clear that Starship is a priority for them and that its success is key to their plans for several projects not least of which being a cargo variant for use as a point-to-point -point delivery system. The Department of the Air Force and its team of federal agencies are doing a lot of work to make sure that once Starship nails its next couple of test flights, it will have enough launch sites to really take advantage of its full potential. While cryogenic tests for Starship have been the main focus here, 
buckle up as the site prepares for major developments including the crucial Starship Flame Trench test system. The primary component we'll discuss is the Flame Bucket. It's composed of four pedestals combined with six C-shaped beams, forming six slots. These pedestals will feature a hollow section with studs or pegs intended to be filled with concrete upon installation to bolster sturdiness. The overall curved shape of the flame bucket enables it to snugly fit against curved walls or transitional surfaces within the test stand. Next up is a component resembling a truss platform, sporting a structure akin to a rectangular window frame with eight horizontal bars and two vertical bars. Once fully assembled, this part will be situated on the inclined surface of the test stand beneath the aperture, initially absorbing the impact from the engine's energy discharge. Positioned in this manner, it will bear a resemblance to a ladder. It will connect with the flame bucket, marking the transition between the inclined and flat surfaces. These two components play a crucial role in redirecting the exhaust generated by the engine. This will consideration for vertical test stands. Moreover, they can be integrated with other water cooling systems to mitigate engine damage. Recently, Chrome Kiwi unveiled images of a new component. This part, circular in shape, is affixed to an A-shaped frame. While the exact method of connection to the aforementioned components remains unclear, it's speculated to be mounted within the aperture above the truss platform. In addition to these components, there may be further additions or systems integrated into the setup. Overall, this system is poised to resemble the flame diverter system beneath SpaceX's Raptor tripod test stand in McGregor. Rocket and engine test stands typically fall into two main categories. Vertical and horizontal. Horizontal stands activate the engine and release energy horizontally, thereby avoiding direct impact on the ground. However, such systems often occupy considerable space and can impact surrounding areas. Conversely, while vertical stands require additional structures, they occupy less space and are better suited for testing in constrained areas like the Massey test site. Yet, their drawback lies in directing the engine's energy stream straight towards the ground, leading to heat and pressure buildup, potentially damaging the system. Let's not underestimate this, as engine power can wreak havoc on the platform. You may recall, the Raptor engines in Flight 1 causing concrete damage and creating a deep hole beneath the OLM. Since vertical test stands necessitate flame diverters to redirect the engine's energy flow. With these models unveiled and considering the characteristics of the Massey test site, the vertical test stand could very well be SpaceX's preferred option for establishing a testing system here. Now let's circle back to the question, why does SpaceX aim to expand the flame trench test system to the Massey test site? As we are aware, SpaceX frequently utilizes the system in McGregor to test engines, such as Merlin or Raptor post-production at factories. Originally constructed for testing military weaponry, McGregor underwent conversion for rocket production and testing, with SpaceX assuming control in 2003, for Merlin engine testing. Notably, SpaceX invested significantly in expanding the site, increasing its size by up to 15 times. This expansion proves pivotal, as SpaceX operates under a distinct strategy, renowned for reusing components including engines. Thus testing systems must function efficiently to ensure engine longevity across multiple flights. With the addition of the Raptor engine, the significance of McGregor further escalated. Following enhancements, Raptor engine production surged significantly, resulting in the McGregor test stand often examining multiple engines daily. However, with a production rate of one engine per day or more, the facilities at McGregor may struggle to meet future demands, particularly considering its concurrent task of testing Merlin engines. To accommodate this immense workload and adhere to the tight Starship launch schedules anticipated in the future, SpaceX necessitates a new facility to share the testing burden effectively. Moreover, the robust development of the Starship project mandates separation from the Falcon rocket system. Costering specialization within each area, this delineation ensures that each sector bears responsibility for distinct systems, preventing overlap that could impede progress. Additionally, establishing a test facility near the production and launch site offers logistical advantages, minimizing travel time and costs. The proximity of the massive test site, a mere 15-minute journey from the launch site, facilitates seamless coordination. Currently, SpaceX is finalizing Star Factory, a facility pivotal to prototype and engine production. Integration of the new test system ensures continuity across production, 
testing, repair, and launch processes expediting operations significantly. More than any other location, the massive test site emerges as the prime choice for housing the flame trench test system for Starship and Raptor engines. Consequently, the introduction of this new testing infrastructure heralds a new era of development for the massive test site. Normally known as the Massey Gun Shop and Range, this site served as a military shooting range. In 2022, SpaceX initiated the process of acquiring this area. While the deal finalized by early 2023, as confirmed by Elon Musk in a tweet last year, similar to the production site and launch site, Massey underwent a transformation from its military origins to become a vital component of SpaceX's operations. Despite its primitive state upon acquisition, SpaceX embarked on a comprehensive rebuilding effort, resulting in rapid and robust development over the past year. Presently, Massey's test site boasts facilities for cryogenic testing for both ship and super-heavy components. Construction of the engine test stand system, discussed earlier, is underway. In the future, Massey will serve as the hub for all testing activities, including spin prime and static fire tests currently conducted at the suborbital pad within the launch site. Recently, removal of pad A and potential demolition of pad B underscores the delineation of testing and launch operations clarifying the roles of each area within Starbase. In alignment with its evolving role, SpaceX is significantly upgrading the infrastructure at Massey's, with construction of small warehouses and testing stands ongoing. Notably, the installation of fuel tanks akin to those at the launch site is a prominent development. These tanks store methane and nitrogen fuel, with fuel piping systems being installed to connect them to the prototype testing system. Further expansion is anticipated to accommodate the Raptor engine testing system, further enhancing Massey's capabilities. Every day, SpaceX is transforming Starbase, propelling it closer to its destiny as the gateway to Mars. While we've grown accustomed to the bustling activity at the production site and launch site, the emergence of the Massey test site signals a new era for SpaceX's Starship project. Hydrogen is mounting for the imminent introduction of the engine flame trench test stand, poised to be one of the most eagerly awaited upgrades. This enhancement serves as a constant source of motivation, fueling our collective aspiration to witness Starship take flight and usher in the next chapter of human exploration and discovery.